this body which we inhabit every day is so familiar to us that we don't pay attention to it anymore. However, looking in the mirror in the morning, we could well get interested in the construction plan of our body. We could admire the perfect symmetry of our eyes and ears, appreciate the mobility of our limbs or our vertical posture. But this didn't happen all at once. A dive into the interior of our body will allow us to understand how we are made. The organization of our nerves, our skeletal structure, the branching out of our blood circulation system are some examples which bear witness to a very old anatomical structure. It was put in place at the time that we were still aquatic creatures. It relates us to species that sometimes seem very far from our own. If we go back to the biggest groups of animals, there are the bilateria, which are animals with bilateral symmetry. The organs on the right of the animal are the same in the mirror as those which are found on the left of the animal. This bilateral symmetry is understood to be the result of living beings that moved in an environment where they propelled themselves from behind, and their sensory organs were placed forward. Welcome to the Bilateria. The symmetrical axis which runs from the mouth to the anus makes us distant heirs of little marine creatures like Amphioxus. This axis is arranged around a nerve which can be distinguished on the dorsal part of the animal. It prefigures the formation of the future spinal cord and vertebral column. It's from this median nerve that the structure of the animal is arranged. This fundamental plan, 600 million years old, is the result of a series of genes which determine the segmentation of the body. Our DNA is like a memory card which keeps a record of this. Through evolution, the median dorsal cord became rigid, giving birth to a vertebral column. All of humanity shares vertebra with 52,000 other species, and the vertebral column was formed around 500 million years ago. Going back to the origin of the vertebrates isn't that difficult. Just go to a fish shop. The story of our origins can be explored by buying a fish. Fish illustrate the history of evolution, the fact that vertebrates were born in an aquatic environment and that half of all vertebrates are boned fish. There's the form that vertebrates must originally have had. At the same time as the vertebral column, another piece of our anatomic puzzle was formed. 500 million years ago, the skull appeared. Then another component of our bone structure was added. All these fish here have a lower jaw and an upper jaw, and this jaw goes back 420 million years. So we inherited from fish our vertebral column, our skull, and our jaw. Again in the water, at the same moment, the great adventure of our eye began. It's one of the most ancient organs of our body. From its aquatic origin, the eye hasn't stopped diversifying, adapting, and improving itself. Our camera type eye is as good as the most developed technologies, linking 3D vision, color distinction, 
and depth perception. We can imagine that such a complex organ must have evolved over a very long period. But the origins of our eye have long remained a mystery. It's only recently that two scientists, one English, the other Australian, have brought together exceptional clues allowing us to advance in the history of our eye. They've managed to unlock the secrets of unique fossils. Gavin Young was interested by placoderms, a prehistoric species of fish with shells now extinct. Sarah Gabbett concentrated on the lamprey, a vertebrate fish without jaws. These fossils bear witness to key moments in the evolution of our eye. Placoderms, if you like, um, are more evolved. They're closer to us. They're closer to fish that we see in the oceans today. Placoderms went extinct. Lampreys didn't go extinct, and so we can still study them as living animals today. Its status as a living fossil makes this strange fish interesting. It's at the end of winter, or in spring, when the lamprey moves upriver to lay its eggs, that it's easiest to find. While the lamprey interests fishermen from the Bordeaux region as a gastronomic speciality, it's also of great interest to science. Lampreys are known as jawless fishes, and they're extremely primitive fish. They're really interesting because they sit at a pivotal point in the evolution of vertebrates. So if we go more primitive than these creatures, we have the uh, Amphioxus and the sea squirts. And then if we move more towards us, if you like, then we have the fish, the bony fish. So they're the most primitive living vertebrates, and that's why they're so important. Luckily, we didn't inherit the alien-like sucker which serves as their mouth. On the other hand, lamprey eyes have very similar characteristics to our own. The real question is to know if their ancestors, which lived 300 million years ago, already had such an elaborate eye. Until now, scientists were confronted by a total enigma with the evolutionary history of the eye. Indeed, although the bony structures of bodies fossilize well, soft organs, such as the eyes, decompose in a few days, leaving no trace. The fossil record has really been very silent on this whole area of evolution until I made this discovery of these eyes in these 300 million year old fossils and realised that actually the eye can become preserved and it can be exquisite in its nature and it can tell us a lot more than we previously thought. I realised there was an eye preserved because there's a little sort of circular black blob and I thought that was it, we could just tell it's an eye. But when I looked at it under the scanning electron microscope and turned the magnification up really high, I realised that the actual structure, the cellular structure at the back of the eye, the retina, was preserved. And this was amazing to me. So 300 million year old eye, it's still there. An electronic microscope allows both the observation of the internal structure of a sample and exploration of all the details, enlarging much more than an optical microscope. 
This is how Sarah could reveal that a fish which lived 300 million years ago could already see much like we do. This is the fossil fish eye magnified to about 5,000 times. And what we're looking at is the retina. And all of these structures here and the way that they're aligned tell us that this particular fossil could form a very clear visual image. The lamprey fossil shows that a complex eye already existed 300 million years ago. The placoderm fossil, studied by Gavin Young, lets us go further in this inquiry into the history of our eye. In fact, for the first time, an entire ocular globe 400 million years old can be observed. This is unique because the inside has been ossified. So the inside, which is normally cartilage, is now bone and it's preserved. And the brain case is also preserved. So we can actually work out how that ancient eye capsule articulated against the brain case. For the first time, we can actually use the computer to do the digital dissection on something that's been dead for 400 million years. Here's the eye capsule to be scanned. Okay. It's uh, extremely fragile and it's unique. So this is a one-off chance to see its internal structure. Well done, just careful. I've never seen inside this before. Can you turn it? That's the optic nerve, hole for the optic nerve going into the eyeball there. That's superb. With his team, Gavin dissects the eye virtually. So that should be a muscle scar, that big depression in there. Here? What about this? Well, that's something coming from the brain, maybe the optic artery coming out and entering the eyeball. To avoid manipulating the fossils, as fragile as they are precious, Gavin Young takes a 3D impression of the ocular globe and the cranium. This reproduction in resin, enlarged many times, shows the slightest anatomical detail. Some particularly interesting indications appear. Once you study everything in detail, you find that some things are different to every living species of jawed vertebrate, but they resemble the jawless vertebrates, that is, it retains a primitive character. The connection to the brain case, the position of the eye muscle, the opening of the optic nerve, these are things that you don't see in any other higher vertebrate. So therefore, it's a, an intermediate stage that shows how complexity is built up over, over long periods of time. We're able to compare this very early placoderm eyeball with the modern jawless lamprey, and it, in, it suggests that there are similarities which are very primitive, so they'd go back to the branching point of the jawless vertebrates and the jawed vertebrates, so that probably, probably goes back 450 or 500 million years to establish that basic pattern. The fossil record is becoming really important in plugging the gaps between the living animals and helping us to understand the sequence of evolution. If we go before the lamprey, the fossil that I've been looking at, 
we go to Amphioxus and they have just a, a kind of single pigment cell. That tells that animal which way is up and down, which is light and dark. And then we evolve another component of the eye. Say you get a few more of these cells, so you start to form a retina. And then gradually you get a cup shape and then you get a lens and so on and so forth. A flashback to 500 million years ago shows that our eye was indeed formed in successive phases, starting from a primitive organ. Returning to our prenatal life also allows us to understand the genesis of our eye. The unique images made by Professor Bradley Smith reveal its secrets. We see in this human embryo the development of the retina, which is this dark area that we see in the eye. Those are the cells that actually detect the light as it uh, comes through the eye. The retina is in fact an outgrowth of the brain. Nervous tissue from the brain travels along what forms the optic nerve and eventually creates the retina. This is something that's shared by all vertebrates. 